So welcome back for the final video on this particular painting. This is the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul painting. What you see in front of you is the result of the sketch from last time and I have a nice little video down on the bottom of it showing what's going on with my palette. I do that for, for part of the video and it's just something fun. Now Remember at the end of the last video I said how that little lamp gave me problems? Well, I tried to put on something called masking fluid. And my masking fluid just uh, went horribly wrong. So <laughs> it was a mistake and I did a tracing over the uh, sketch to, to possibly, you know, recover it if I needed to because of all that hard work I put in. So what you see me getting, as far as colors go, is some burnt sienna onto my palette. Now what I use are M. Graham watercolors. This is in my desktop palette. And they are on the pricier side as far as, as watercolors go. They're made with honey. They're made here in the U.S. And I just love using them. Um, I've used several different kinds. And I'm going to have some other ones soon that I will be showing you but uh, I'm also getting some I believe that's ultramarine blue and you notice how when you mix those together as I warned you before it gives you a gray color so this is my gray color base that I'm going to be using uh, throughout the painting really uh, I'm you know trying to spread out the blue because remember the original picture shows a cloudy day so I I want a blue but I want a touch of gray in there just to darken it up uh, I got some cobalt blue up front and that's a, that's not an a M. Graham watercolor that is a Daniel Smith cobalt blue of which I have no clue where the tube of it is anymore it's somewhere here in my study at home and I'm just not sure where. A key part that I've been learning with making watercolors is to work at having enough color in your palette before you start painting for whatever particular spot you are. Now unfortunately I don't uh, often remember to do that but Oh, well, there it is. I'm learning just as much as everybody else. So what you're noticing now is I'm doing a wet one technique. So I'm wetting the paper down uh, as far as the sky goes. And now I know the video's off because it shows me grabbing some color for, for the sky and the palette, but I'm not there yet. Um, so, of course, maybe I'll be wrong and I'll adjust the video, but... What you do notice when I finally get down to it here is laying that color down again in as large a brush strokes as possible. Now, those minarets on Hagia Sophia, no, they're not going to be blue. But the key with watercolor is you're painting in layers. Okay, so it's okay to do that where you go over another spot because you're going to be adding color on top of that. Now, like I said, since this is the first time I've ever done a video with having the palette there next to me as well for you to see, I'm not too worried about having everything synced up because, hey, I've never done this before, so you get to enjoy it along with me. Now, the key on this is as we do our first bit of painting, we are then going to need to let this layer dry before we move to the next one. Kind of like what we did with the value study, except it's more critical now because if the paper's too wet, as you will see, it can cause some things that you don't want to happen. So I've got the sky pretty much set where I want it. We're going to move on to the buildings and now Hagia Sophia is mostly a kind of a red brick building so I'm mixing up sort of an earthy rusty red tone uh, you notice I put some red down and then I went and got a different red that's because it wasn't the right shade of red for what I was thinking of and no I don't remember which colors they are I have to look at my palette to tell you 
This is one of the fun, challenging parts with watercolor for me is, again, remembering I'm not trying to match the colors exactly because it's a painting. It's not a photograph. And that means there is a creative influence here that I can just kind of let things be the way they need to be on my palette as I put it down. Now you notice I didn't use a wet on wet technique here and that's because I'm trying to control this watercolor just a little bit more because I know there's going to be uh, splotches of gray or grayish blue in different parts here. Um, so I'm just slowly working on this and building it up. Now of course when I think about uh, Turkey again you know I, I, a painting like this I'm sharing some of my experiences and what I remember and it's at this point as I'm working on this painting I'm thinking of where we stayed while we were in Turkey and we stayed at this little hotel that was actually practically across the street from the Blue Mosque and the Blue Mosque is across the street from Hagia Sophia and originally this was a church not a mosque it's currently a museum and uh, it was if I'm not mistaken it was done by the Byzantine church and it's seen as kind of the ultimate type of architecture that it is it's that dome shape architecture and uh, in the Islamic in the Muslim community I'm sorry uh, when they came along and uh, were inventing themselves they were really taken by this architecture and the architecture from this building subsequently impacted and influenced uh, the design of mosques all across the um, Muslim empires at the time and so you know those are, are tidbits you don't often think about you know this this building has been around for hundreds of years by the time I'm putting it on paper and I didn't look up but I'm sure there are other massively well done paintings by other artists uh, of this very building for the very reason that I'm doing it, it it's just iconic in its shape and its and its lines how it flows together um, and its importance through history can't be un underestimated um, there's many amazing things about this building. With the Blue Moss being across the street from us when we were at the hotel, uh, I, I would tell you it's a very jarring experience when I was in Turkey because we got there and, and uh, we ran around doing some things right away. And then I remember passing out in my room for a nap because our internal clocks were all off. And then the call to prayer rang out and just woke woke me out of a dead sleep and it was funny because it was at that moment you know even though having already started to see some of the architecture and buildings around I went oh wow I am really in another place in the world um, it, it was a neat experience so now you notice I'm putting the the neck color down. This is a more gray color. It's a little bit more brown than it probably should be, but that's okay. I'll you know adjust later. But you will notice I put that color down maybe slightly too soon because on the uh, left hand side of that dome, it's spread. The color is spreading out into the sky a bit, and um, that's called uh, color flowering. It looks like little cauliflower when, when you zoom in close to it. And it's not something you really want to happen. So I do recover from that a bit later. It is still on the painting. But uh, at the end, I'm pretty happy with where everything turned out. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up this video again so that you can... Uh, get through it a little bit faster than the process I had to go through for it and can uh, see what's going on so
I'm back for the second layer. And I did let the paper dry a lot more than I did the first time around. And uh, But you can notice there, like I said, on the left-hand side of Hagia Sophia's Dome, that is a big cauliflower area that just kind of leached out into the sky. And fortunately for me, my sketch wasn't exactly accurate. So uh, the area where I painted there isn't a straight down edge in the picture. It's more rounded. So I'm able to recover it a little bit later. This is always an intimidating, intimidating part of watercolor painting to me because after this first wash I almost never think that the painting is looking good. It you know looks splotchy, it doesn't look like anything's popping or any colors, but that's part of the process of letting go in watercolor in my opinion. Again, you know, this is why I use watercolor for relaxation is it's the process of letting go of the control of your medium. Now, you do need to exercise control of your medium, right? You, you notice I'm approaching the paper with enough water on my brush with the water, uh, with the brush itself kind of brought up to a nice tip as I'm starting to do a little finer materials here. That is as much control as I can muster. And, and uh, when you're going on to the second layer here, you're adding thicker paint down. So at each stage you, of this painting, you have to add just a little bit thicker material down. So you're going to see I'm, I'm going around picking up different colors, um, modifying things as best I can, and just continuing in that process. Like I said, this part of watercolor painting is the most difficult, and one of the reasons watercolor has appealed to me so much is that it makes me remember that much of what we do in our lives is not a finished product. We're not finished products. We are constantly uh, evolving and being shaped into new things. And it helps me remember that while something may not go the way I want it to go or be at the right spot I want it to be at, that that's kind of life and that's how we just continue to develop ourselves. Now you notice with the sky, it has lightened up significantly from when it was wet. So it's maybe not as gray as it could be, uh, but I'm happy with it. It looks like a fairly clean and easy wash that has gone down. Um, I'm really happy with how those uh, palm fronds on the right hand side are, are looking and I think they're looking pretty impressive. Um, you know, the painting's coming along and things are developing and you notice how laying that thicker paint down like just now it starts to clean up those edges so those edges look more correct for lack of a better way to put it. So I was sharing a bit about some of the history as I understand it of Hagia Sophia and uh, one thing I haven't said is the interpretation of the name is the Church of Wisdom uh, Sophia meaning wisdom in Greek and uh, it's amazing when you look at a piece of architecture like this and realize, as I said before, how many different things are based off of that architecture and based off of uh, someone coming up and seeing that experience. I mean, we are used to, or we're fairly used to massive buildings now. You know, I've been in many cities across the U.S. and uh, skyscrapers exist, right? One thing I, I've tried to teach people and try to teach my own kids, we, we've been to New York City, and you always let them have that initial bit of wonder of staring up at the building and how tall they are, but then remind them that, uh, sweetie, we don't want to look like tourists because, you know, uh, if somebody's going to try to get you to buy something or something like that, they're going to target a tourist, not a native. And so you, you kind of try to remove some of that wonder. But then you look at a building like this, as massive as it is, that was built hundreds of years ago, and that's why it would inspire people the way it did. I mean, this is not a common sight 
in its day. And even today, it is just an absolute gorgeous building by any standard. Uh, the Blue Mosque is also a gorgeous building. And in, in the course of this painting is when I decided that, you know, I have Hagia Sophia here. I should do uh, a partner painting with it and do the Blue Mosque. So the very next painting we're doing is the Blue Mosque after this. And I'm working on that one as I'm finishing up on the recording of this one and it's just a wonderful pairing together and I'll go into some of the, the decisions I make on how to compose that picture and I am doing some things differently than I'm doing in this one in part because I just feel like it again remember you know for most of us art is not a profession and while I've been fortunate to sell a few of my pieces and and have people take an interest in my art I by no stretch of the imagination am ever going to be wealthy with my artwork so really what I'm doing is for my own pleasure for uh, hopefully the enjoyment of others so that they might uh, it might brighten your day or someone else's day or they might go hey I've been there I, I know what that was like and that's the whole purpose behind this painting for me or painting in general is again that relaxation of being able to enter into a cr different creative space than I typically am for my work life Now I say a different creative space because uh, we have a tendency, I think, in our culture to view creativity as either strictly an artistic uh, endeavor or something that you engage in apart from your work. But I've been fortunate that you know my profession is a very creative type of profession. I am publicly speaking every week. I've got to be creative in what I say and how I say it. Uh, always trying to think of new ways to relate ancient information to people. And, and that's part of the process I think all of us go through for our jobs, creative problem solving. But I think it's important to engage that creativity in other places in our lives, even if we may not be good at it. Uh, I guarantee you, with the videos I'm putting up on here, I'm going to do other things besides watercolor, and I'm going to go, oh my gosh, that turned out horrible, or I'm really not good at this. And that's okay. That's part of the enjoyment. Sometimes we've got to be willing to fail in order to be better at whatever it is we're putting ourselves to.
So here we are back with another drying time having been completed. And you notice there was a lot more detail that I was able to get in through the end of that painting. And uh, we start to see some form for the bushes and the trees and, and everything like that. Now, at this point, I don't have a, another video of my palette, so you're not going to get to see that part as we go forward. But this third level is kind of the final stage for me. I, I tend to do my watercolor painting in three stages, but you can continue to add more and more detail as you go on, but we're going to move on with more of the finer things. So as you can tell, that's probably the finest brush uh, I will put to this painting. Actually, I know it's the final finest brush I will put to this painting. And now I'm really adding some of those details. These are things that I didn't want muddled. Um, I don't want wet paper while dealing with this. And this is where I'm trying to fix some of those cauliflower edges as I will go over to the other side of the dome. Uh, now, these details are, in my opinion, some of the things that can make or break a painting. You can go with too many details and that's when things start looking fake, for lack of a better way to put it. Or you can put not enough details in and everything remains fuzzy. For some of the landscape paintings I do, the less details, the better. Because then you're more invited into the scene, you're imagining the scene. But I know with something like this, most of you haven't seen this building in person. You don't know what Hagia Sophia looks like on its own. So I want to suggest more detail than, you know, normal, I would say. But even there, these details, while being finer, are not, quote, fine details. And, and what I mean by that is, I'm not, if, if you really, like, zoom in on a picture here, you'll notice, uh, not in this picture, but on a picture of Hagia Sophia, you will notice different architectural features and little, uh, lack of a better way to put it, rain gutters, you know, things of that nature. I'm not trying to give you all of that information because, again, it's not a photo. It's a painting. So this is the time where I'm going to add things like windows and the roof edges so that they are all more clearly defined so that you might see uh, more of this building as a whole. So I'm actually going to speed this up here uh, because this section takes quite a bit of time, much like sketching out the original picture. You know, this is not something you want to rush. There's no do-overs if you mess this part up. So that's why I'm taking my time here. So let's speed it up a little bit and see what happens. <laughs>
So here we are basically at the end of the finished product. And uh, I apologize that I didn't slide this painting back over. I didn't really think about the camera placement when I moved it. When I did the white parts, those were done with uh, gouache. And uh, I mentioned gouache before, and I will go into it probably at another time, but it's basically like watercolor, but a benefit to it is things like white, if you lay it down thickly enough, will, will actually sit on top and not blend in to the other watercolors that are present. And so here I just continue to add finer and finer details, and I have to say I am very happy with how this painting was turning out. Um, it turned out even better than I thought it would. And to give you an idea, I had tried to paint this exact picture probably eight or more years ago and felt that I failed horribly at it. And uh, I think I still have it somewhere in one of my boxes. I keep most of my paintings, including many of my failures, uh, so that I can see how I progress and I try not to visit them too often but every once in a while I do. It's always helpful to see where we've been so that we know how good we're doing now or, or if we even have improved or those types of things. You notice with these details that they are just so much more um, they add so much more to the painting, I should say. They, they're the little pops of color that help draw your eye in and, and make, at least for me, makes me feel more engaged with the painting as a whole. So this is the constant state of evaluation. Now, when you're doing these fine details, one thing to remember is how thick you're putting the paint down. It might need a little more time to dry. Um, one danger I have often hit whenever I've been doing watercolor painting is I'll accidentally put my hand down on a part of wet paint. But here we are. Now, something I didn't do with this, which um, we're going to switch to another video here in a moment, so that you can see the final unveiling. So here we go with the final unveiling. You'll notice there are some other details that were added on here, such as the tree branches or the uh, tree with no leaves in front of the building itself. I wasn't quite finished when I switched, but I realized I left out the most satisfying part for you, and that's removing the tape at the end. So I already had my recording stuff taken down, so I had to quickly set up my phone and try to do this with my phone, which is why everything's a little odd and a little different. But I find this part so satisfying because sometimes when you put a wash of color down for watercolor, it's so light, you don't really, it can be hard to tell. But once you get that clean white edge, then you can really notice. You notice how carefully I'm pulling it off because sometimes even painter's tape like this can catch and just hold on. So I want to thank you for joining me on this uh, first painting journey with you. And I will be putting this up for sale on my Redbubble or you can contact me for prints uh, as well as the next painting, which will kind of go with it. Be blessed.